Hello boys and girls, friends old and new, welcome to the channel. My name is Dion and today we have this uh, beautiful uh, Breitling Premier on the bench. But there is a problem. You see the chronograph does not reset properly. And here's a tip if you want to test the reset of your chronograph. Let uh, the counters go to halfway around the dial. Because that's the most challenging position for the mechanism to reset. We'll get back to why later. Let's have a look at the watch. The dial actually looks really nice in person, but it is certainly worn. It has what seems to be the original crown, and the case is in very nice condition as well. So overall, the watch uh, looks very nice. The time graph looks uh, pretty okay also. Straight lines, that's the most important. If only we could fix the chronograph, then it would be a very nice watch to wear. And inside the watch we see the wonderful uh, Venus 175. And let's have a look in the case back. That is a lot of writing. Does that mean it's a problem watch? Maybe, but it's also an 80 year old watch, so uh, there would be some servicing done before. We see the crown also doesn't want to come out. So what we're going to do is to first take off the crystal with this uh, crystal lift. And then we can take off the hands. And worst case, we can take off the dial from uh, the other side, given that this uh, old uh, movement has uh, dog screws securing the dial. Which means there are no screws on uh, the side of the movement. They're all on uh, the train side. It's a bit uh, disconcerting that the crown doesn't come out either. But let's uh, release uh, the case screws. And there's a ring as well holding uh, the movement in place. And that is due to the pretty cool construction of the pushers that we will see a little bit later. We're also going to create a little bit more space in the movement. We'll do that by taking off a couple of uh, the levers. And then the crown does come out, that's good. Then we should be able to get the movement out in, uh, I almost said one piece, but uh, let's say 100 pieces, just held together by some screws. So Breitling is of course uh, most known for their uh, extremely busy dials on uh, models such as the Navitimer and the Breitling for Bentley series, which uh, features some of the most hideous watches ever made, in my humble opinion. But uh, this was also a concern for uh, Breitling back in the 1940s, uh, when the Premier was introduced. They were known for uh, pilot's watches uh, with a lot of detail on the dial, and they wanted to create something a little bit more dressy. And that's where the Breitling Premier came in. It was marketed as a dressier choice for humans and penguins. And a little known fact is that uh, that is where oversized watches really came in because penguins have really small wrists. Anyway, we're taking the hammer out and there is a problem. Let's look at what to do with that later. Just now we're going to continue disassembling the watch. Let's just uh, round off the history discussion. Breitling has reintroduced the Premier. They even have non-chronograph uh, Premiers. But uh, Premier is uh, again uh, sticking to this little bit dressier uh, choice. We come down to taking out uh, the chronograph wheels. You might have uh, seen this movement before. I did a service on a Juvenia with uh, the Venus 175. It's a beautiful uh, movement. Very traditional horizontal clutch, column wheel. And a very nice movement to work on uh, with a few weaknesses, but uh, let's get back to that later. Column wheel chronographs are uh, very expensive nowadays. 
they were more expensive back then of course as well but the labor costs were much uh, cheaper uh, 50 100 years ago and the column wheel chrome graphs are just very smooth to operate so that's the big difference between them and the cam shifted chronograph I'm going to take off this chronograph driving wheel. I have this special little tool for that. And we use this little extra plate as a bridge to push against for this tool. We do see that there is quite some play in the center wheel. But the barrel is uh, fine. Speaking of bright links, I also did a service on the Navi timer, a beautiful old uh, AOPA Navi timer with a big brother of this movement inside, the 178, that also has an hour counter. Breitling uh, never had in house movements until uh, just a few years ago, but they did use uh, pretty much the best movements uh, they could get. One tricky thing with this movement, and also a few other uh, movements, is uh, the fourth wheel. It's under this little lip. So to get it out without uh, bending or breaking the pivots, we want to make sure that that little lip is in between two spokes in the wheel. That makes the wheel a little bit more flexible. Very straightforward keyless works, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. But uh, we do notice that this watch does not have a shock setting. It has capsules, so we need to take those out and clean them. But uh, on the train side, in the balance, we're going to do that after we run uh, the movement uh, through the cleaning machine. Now, notice the barrel arbor. It is very loose. So if we're going to reuse this main spring, we're going to need to uh, tighten up that uh, inner loop. Now the reason the crown was stuck is that there is some corrosion on uh, the setting lever. So we're going to use a uh, fiberglass uh, brush to get that off. And then we're going to clean uh, the pivots of the wheels with this uh, Eve Flex stick that we use. All right, time to kick back and let uh, someone else do the work. While the movement is cooking together with the potatoes, let's uh, have a look at the case. You see the pushers are simply hooked on uh, what seems to be a piece of uh, mainspring. Very cool and ingenious. And on special request, this one goes out to all the lovers of fingernails scraping down the blackboard. Take it away, Elma. Now let's look at the reset of the chronograph. If you remember we took out this part, this is the so-called hammer. Actually, there are two hammers on this. There's one for the chronograph wheel, so the seconds counter, and one for the minute counter. And when we press the reset on the chronograph, these two hammers then hit their respective uh, hard shaped cams on the wheels to reset the chronograph. So the ends of the hammers need to be highly polished and uh, the same of course with hard shaped cams. Now this doesn't meet the definition of highly polished. I have no idea what, the, what on earth happened to this uh, hammer, but it looks like someone just filed it randomly. Very odd. 
So we're first gonna level it and then we're gonna polish it. Very important that there's as little friction as possible, of course, when this one hits the hardship camps. So I'm uh, first using a uh, stone to uh, level uh, the face of the hammer, actually both hammers. And then we're going to put it in a handheld vise. And then we're going to polish the surfaces using uh, from 800 grit up to uh, 5000 to make sure we get a very smooth and nice uh, surface. We also need to uh, polish the sides of the hammer the sides of the surface rather, to make sure there are no rugged edges there that can interfere with the, the reset. I only showed uh, one grit, but uh, went through quite a few. And in the end, we uh, reach a much better result. There is still one other problem that we'll have to uh, address, and that's the angle of the hammer. But uh, let's get back to that later. Let's then uh, turn to uh, assembling the movement again. We are going to reuse uh, the mainspring. But we remember that uh, the inner loop was very loose. So we're going to tighten it a little bit. And we have some uh, special dancing uh, pliers for that. Or was that shaky hands? Sometimes I cannot tell the difference. We have gotten the mainspring into uh, our mainspring winder. And then we can press that into the barrel. And that fits a little bit snugger or snugglier or snuggler. Oh, sounds like a Batman villain, the Snuggler, dressed in a pink Snuggie. Now to clean uh, the cap uh, jewels in these old watches is a little bit of a hassle. We need to take uh, the balance off the cock. And then we have these uh, two tiny little screws that allow us to uh, get the cap jewel uh, free. Cleaning it in some uh, essence of Renata. And if there's any stuck uh, residue, we can uh, rub that off in this little uh, tissue paper. That's what it's very useful for. And then we're going to oil it from uh, the underside. Can put the oil directly on the capstone as well. Now the hairspring has a breguet overcoil, so we need to be a little bit extra careful when we put uh, the hairspring between the index pins. That looks all right. Another repair we have to make is uh, the bridge. Remember that uh, the center wheel was a little bit uh, loose, too much play. So we're going to have to bring out the watchmaker sledgehammer. So we have uh, two domed surfaces. One on the stake and one on the punch. And uh, these should not entirely meet. There should be a little bit of uh, bridge in between. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why watchmakers are such hunks. You need pretty much superhuman strength to control that watchmaker sledgehammer. Now, it might sound like we're just tippy-tapping it, but <laughs> no, not really. Just ask uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was actually rejected for watchmaking school because he was just not strong enough. Now, after we uh, hammer the hole, it's a little bit too small. So we're going to open it up a little bit with a smoothing brooch that uh, compresses the metal as well so that uh, the bearing for the wheel becomes uh, strong enough. And uh, this is something you might have to do a few times. And that's how you build muscle. All right, we're going to put in uh, all of the train wheels. And then we have the bridge or the three-quarter plate. 
and also uh, the cock for uh, the escape wheel and uh, the fourth wheel. So we put all of them in together so that we can check that uh, the train uh, runs freely. And that looks all right. And then we can put uh, the keyless works back in. I think we should just start referring to it as the winding system. Calling keyless works uh, is so uh, 80s. I mean, 1780s. We're putting some uh, thick oil on all these different posts. So D5 or HP1300. For the center wheel arbor, where we press uh, the cannon pinion on, I used uh, 9504. And just as a general rule, Wherever you have a high force between two metal pieces, so rubbing against each other, you want to use uh, grease. 9504 is uh, very good, or Molecule TX, or some other specialized uh, greases. Where you have something rotating with a high torque, so let's say closer to the barrel, you want to use a thick oil, so D5 HP 1300. And where you have uh, rotating parts at high speed, such as the escape wheel or the fourth wheel, you want to use uh, light oil, so a 9010. Or 9020 if it's a pocket watch. And yes, watchmakers' oils are very expensive. But it's a little bit like a perfume bottle, at least for men, or maybe just for me. You have it your entire life. I mean, I've moved houses like seven times, and I still have three pretty much full perfume bottles. Maybe not perfume per se, that's probably the more feminine part of it, but uh, eau de Cologne. I mean, even if you put on uh, perfume daily, and yes, I said perfume, let's just call it what it is, guys. It's perfume. I use perfume, men use perfume, but just tiny little bit. And that is why I will die with those three bottles of perfume and my uh, son will inherit them. And he'll probably die with at least two and a half of them. Anyway, we put together the movement, the base movement, and we're going to lubricate uh, the pallet stones a little bit. So we put some oil on the exit pallet stone and then we rotate uh, the escape wheel five teeth at a time. So do that three times, then we cover the entire escape wheel. And before we put the balance in, we're going to oil uh, the bottom capstone as well. And then the moment of truth. And seeing that balance starting to oscillate, that's the ultimate pleasure for a watchmaker. Now, if you think that sounded a little bit sad, then yeah, you're right now. Yeah. Let's put some power on the main spring, and then we can oil the pivots and check this baby on the time grapher. This is a demagnetizer. We put the movement down on it. And we turn it 90 degrees to remove uh, any um, magnetism. And then let's see on the time grapher. That looks uh, pretty okay. Straight lines, not too bad uh, beat error. So with a little bit of adjustment, we uh, make the watch uh, run just nice. For uh, the chronograph parts, uh, I like to uh, let down the main spring before I put on uh, the driving wheel again. 
not strictly necessary, but uh, old habits die hard. Now, there are uh, a lot of ways to skin... Uh, man. There are a lot of ways to uh, do things. And there's a lot of ways to uh, build a chronograph uh, also. This time we're going to start with a column wheel. And next time we go like completely crazy and start with, you know, something completely out there like uh, the chronograph wheel. Yeah. I don't want to mess with a crazy watchmaker with a watchmaker sledgehammer. You make sure that the clutch uh, runs uh, smoothly. You wouldn't want to find a piece of yarn in your uh, clutch wheel that we did one time. Same thing for the uh, intermediate uh, minute uh, wheel. Also check that it runs smoothly and we put a tiny little bit of oil on the underside. Oh, I mentioned uh, in terms of weaknesses. And I think uh, the main weakness uh, in this uh, Venus uh, family is this tiny little uh, two-pronged spring that holds uh, both the intermediate uh, minute counter wheel and the brake in place. That one uh, can be easily damaged. Otherwise, it's a um, beautiful uh, movement to work on and to uh, see in action. Very classic, very stylish. It works uh, very nicely, high quality. On the column wheel itself, we're putting some uh, grease there. Molecote 9504, that kind of thing, is uh, perfect for that. Because the columns or the pillars in the wheel, they interact with the different levers to uh, basically allow them to uh, rotate or pivot or not. So we need to make sure that they can uh, slide uh, easily. All right, we get the hammer in place and we can put on the hammer spring. And then the operating lever. Now oh, here comes another little snag. This uh, spring for uh, the operating lever that basically presses the lever back after you uh, operate it. It's not uh, the correct spring. I noticed when I took it off that uh, the screw was not the right kind and that it was also screwed down very very tightly. And looking at it on the underside there's no uh, steady pin. So my first inclination was to make a steady pin. So I had drilled a little hole, I turned a little pin and pressed the pin into the spring. And then I brushed it so that it looked uh, pretty similar again. And there we have uh, the spring with a steady pin. But uh, going through this, uh, I also realized that uh, I wasn't really happy with this uh, solution in any case. So I decided to get the replacement spring. Also, the spring should actually be a little bit uh, raised. So there's a little piece underneath it. Given that uh, the spring actually uh, works against a little pin on the operating lever, that is then raised a little bit above the plate. And with a new spring in place, it looks much better. Let's then check the action on the chronograph. And we can see that this is uh, a chronograph for people in a hurry. Because a minute will flick over twice. So we adjust that and try again. And this time is a different error. Because now the finger on the chronograph wheel 
but against the teeth of the intermediate uh, minute counter wheel. So adjust and try again. And these adjustments are all done by this uh, eccentric screw I uh, ringed around here. You basically turn the intermediate uh, minute wheel a little bit closer or further from the chronograph uh, wheel, the seconds wheel in the center. And then we'll see that finally the depth thing is correct and the wheel flips over properly. But wait, there is more. When the hammer strikes the hard shape cam, it will force it to rotate until the flat end rests against the hammer or vice versa. And when that happens, uh, the hard shape cam's pointy end should be 100 degrees opposite of the finger of the chronograph wheel. But with a mangled hammer in this watch, we have to also rotate that finger a little bit so it actually flips over one minute after we start the chronograph and uh, not uh, at some other point. It's just friction fit on the arbor, so we can move it. And this will not be uh, exactly correct, so we're going to move it a little bit in situ later if necessary. But this is the way you can do it. All right. Then uh, we're almost ready to case the watch again. I kind of like these uh, pushers. I think it's a very cool design. Certainly not uh, expensive or exclusive, if you will, but uh, ingenious for sure. The movement can be a little bit tricky to get into the case. Just have to make sure that the pusher ends uh, fit into uh, the cutouts for the levers, and then we should be fine. And yes, we put a crystal underneath uh, the dial to protect it. And it seems the chronograph works now. That's uh, how we want to see it. Pretty much the last thing we do before um, wearing the watch is to put on uh, the hands. For uh, cam switched chronographs, you can uh, typically uh, press the reset button and that will press the hammer against uh, the hard shed cams. But for column wheel chronographs, uh, the hammer is just released with a spring. So we have to make sure we uh, reset before we place uh, the chronograph uh, counting hands, the minute and the central seconds. Given that this uh, watch doesn't have a date, we can put uh, our hand wherever we want and then press it down and then just, of course just make sure that we align the minute hand with it later. That old habit is to sort of put it on 12 o'clock. Now the dial originally had a blue scale uh, outside uh, what we can see is the red one. So it does show quite some wear around uh, the edge. But it still looks uh, very nice uh, in person. And that uh, gold lettering is just beautiful. Putting a new crystal on the watch. Use uh, the crystal lift again. And then we can uh, try the chronograph. Let's speed it up a little bit. See that the minutes flip over at the right time. And then we're going to check at around uh, 30 seconds again. Oh, it was a little bit late. But the flyback uh, works as it should. And that's good to see. Let's put the case back on again. And we're going to find a nice strap. And then we can see uh, the watch uh, on the wrist. And there we have it. The original uh, 1940s Breitling Premier. The dressier uh, watch from uh, Breitling at the time. And it is a very stylish watch indeed. Let's uh, check the chronograph one more time. And there we 
we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then clicking a like and subscribe will really help the channel. Share it on social media. We'll be back shortly with another video. Until then, ta-ta.